Is this on? Yes, great. Um, so, uh, hi, my name is Maya. Uh, I'll be presenting part of my ongoing PhD work, um, which focuses on uh, adaptive learning and the cholinergic system. So, uh, the main source of acetylcholine in the cortex is the cholinergic basal forebrain, which consists of a relatively small number of uh, very large cholinergic neurons. Uh, each of these neurons innervates a, a large cortical area, uh, which initially led to the view that cholinergic modulation is a diffuse or a global process. Um, and this was initially supported by experimental evidence as well, but as uh, experimental methods grew in their precision, this revealed a more structured uh, structure of uh, the cholinergic projections, um, perhaps suggesting that uh, this modulation could be an area-wise uh, phenomenon. Um, and this is also supported by recent work from Cargan Lab showing heterogeneous modulation of acetylcholine uh, across cortical areas. Um, but in addition to this, uh, we also know, uh, we've also known for a couple of decades that uh, there could be a local source of acetylcholine in the cortex coming from a subtype of VIP interneurons and uh, these have been uh, recently shown to release acetylcholine. So our first question is, what is the spatial specificity required for cholinergic modulation? And to uh, answer this question, first we need to think about uh, what the cholinergic system is for. Um, so uh, acetylcholine is of course involved in many things such as arousal and attention, uh, but we focus here on its uh, role in learning. Um, and synaptic plasticity. So for example, um, Doi proposed in uh, their 2002 paper that uh, acetylcholine controls the learning rate in a reinforcement learning setting. So uh, this cortical area can receive um, some um, interesting state information uh, that's relevant uh, in state S, and its weight update will be partially modulated by the learning rate alpha, which is then modulated by the cholinergic system. And uh, we know from uh, experimental evidence that uh, cholinergic signaling scales with uh, prediction errors, sorry, unsigned prediction errors, and on a more uh, local level, acetylcholine is involved in uh, synaptic plasticity. And uh, this modulation, in turn, uh, can shape cortical circuits and facilitate learning. So, for example, um, in in this case, a rodent it may be trained on a skilled motor task uh, that involves its uh, forelimb, shown here in yellow, and its uh, representation of the forelimb will then expand as it learns this task, and this expansion is enabled by uh, cholinergic modulation. Um, but on the flip side, we also know that uh, cholinergic malfunction is also associ associated with cognitive decline as it's the first system to break down in uh, Alzheimer's dementia. And to this date, uh, cholinergic drugs are the only approved treatment for AD. Um, and um, we also know that it's neuroprotective in injuries as cutting off cholinergic modulation prior to uh, lesions can lead to worse cognitive impairments. So our qu second question is, um, why is it that the uh, cholinergic system is associated with uh, both learning and cognitive decline? And to investigate these questions, we use a neural network model recently developed in our lab. Uh, and in this model, uh, cortical areas map onto layers and uh, local assemblies map onto individual units. Um, this model uh, has both excitatory uh, and inhibitory populations, uh, so it models uh, pyramidal neurons and SST interneurons, and um, it um, and it also uh, has implements a uh, biologically plausible version of the error backpropagation algorithm. Um, so uh, we model the cholinergic system as a module that receives cortical errors and then uh, produces a modulation factor M, which in turn uh, scales the learning rate and influences the weight updates. And uh, here we will look at only the two extremes as an initial exploration, where we will look at only global modulation, where uh, the module produces a modulation factor M for the entire network. 
and a local modulation where modulation factor M is produced for each unit in the network. In addition to these two spatial levels of specificity, um, we will also model two adaptive learning rules inspired by uh, machine learning methods. Um, first, the perfect integrator, where the modulation factor will accumulate errors over time, thus uh, the learning rate will uh, decrease over time, and a leaky integrator, um, which will keep a uh, moving average of the errors. Uh, so only the most recent errors will affect uh, the learning rate. So first, we train the model on a toy sensory discrimination task where it needs to classify uh, these points. And uh, the first thing we want to know is whether our cholinergic module will uh, improve or speed up learning. And uh, we see that uh, the perfect integrator, in case of global modulation, uh, does perform better than uh, models without any cholinergic modulation. However, um, uh, however uh, the leaky modulation uh, is not sped up compared to that. Sorry, yes, this is actually the right plot. Um, although it does eventually converge to um, the same accuracy level. Um, in case of local modulation, we see uh, that both adaptive methods lead to faster learning. Um, and then we wanted to know whether uh, these adaptive uh, learning mechanisms will uh, make the networks more selective uh, to relevant task features. Um, and we measured how uh, predictive the units in these networks were of task variables uh, by computing neutral information. So here we see um, the, um, here we see the distributions of mutual information um, for units in these networks. And uh, we see that in both uh, cases of global and local modulation, the leaky integrator leads to a wider distribution of values, perhaps suggesting that it's encoding uh, more diverse uh, solutions to the task or it has a more diverse task encoding in its units, um, whereas uh, the perfect integrator is uh, similar to uh, a network without any modulation. Um, we then looked at sparsity, and uh, we see that uh, networks produced, uh, networks without any modulation uh, are the least sparse. Uh, the perfect integrator is slightly sparse in both uh, global and local cases. However, the leaky integrator produces uh, the sparsest networks. Um, and then we wanted to know whether any of these uh, characteristics would um, change how these uh, networks uh, respond to cell death. So we simulate uh, injury by knocking out uh, random units in these networks. And here on the x-axis, we see the percentage of uh, lost units. And on the y-axis, we see the change in accuracy. So for the global uh, modulation case, um, both adaptive methods perform uh, better uh, under this ablation experiment. Um, than networks without any modulation. Um, however, the leaky integrator performs uh, much better than uh, the perfect integrator. Um, under local modulation, uh, there are uh, little changes in uh, uh, the leaky method. However, there's a slight improvement for the perfect integrator. Um, we want would uh, replicate across uh, different tasks. And uh, next we move on to um, a more standard uh, machine learning task where the network will learn to classify 10 different digits. Um, first, looking at the speed up in learning, uh, both uh, adaptive methods lead to faster learning, both in uh, global and local modulation. Um, in terms of mutual information, we see uh, that the landscape is reversed where uh, networks without any modulation now have uh, lower mutual information in, in their units. However, um, similarly as to before, uh, adaptive modulation produces networks with a slightly wider distribution of units, uh, still suggesting that perhaps they're encoding uh, the task variables in a more uh, diversified way. Um, in terms of sparsity, it's uh, also similar to before, where um, networks without any modulation produce uh, less uh, sparse networks. Um, and uh, moving on to the ablation experiment, uh, the adaptive methods are again 
um, more robust to cell death than networks without any modulation. Um, and it, again, with uh, the local modulation, we see that there's a slight improvement for um, the perfect integrator, whereas uh, the leaky integrator actually becomes slightly worse. So to sum up, uh, networks without modulation learn to use the entire population to solve a task, whereas networks trained with cholinergic modulation tend to develop units uh, with more diverse task encodings, uh, which can provide partial solutions to the task, making these networks more robust. Um, and then to come back to our questions, um, so the first question was, uh, what is the specificity required for efficient uh, cholinergic neuromodulation? And uh, from uh, our results so far, we see that uh, global modulation can be sufficient, um, but under some conditions, uh, local modulation may be needed uh, to see this uh, beneficial effect. And um, our second question was, how uh, is the cholinergic system associated with both learning and cognitive decline? And in this case, it seems that um, the way that uh, the cholinergic modulation affects learning leads to more robustness in the resulting networks. Um, and that is all. Um, I would like to thank uh, my supervisor, Rui, and uh, my colleagues uh, and my, uh, the other lab members, especially Heng, Will, uh, Kevin, and Joe. And uh, yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. While the, the next speaker gets set up, maybe we have time. There's one quick question. Go ahead. Hi, that, that was a very interesting talk. Um, I just had a question kind of going back to the basal forebrain basics. Um, how confident are we that the unsigned prediction errors that you know we all see, including my lab and the basal forebrain, are modulating learning rate? So what, what is the current thinking there? Yeah, so I guess it's, Currently not, um, yeah, it, we don't know that for sure, um, but uh, given that acetylcholine is involved in synaptic plasticity, right. we just wanted to explore this, um, and we think that there's sufficient uh, evidence to suggest that this might be what's, no. yeah, what's happening. Definitely, and then just this, this second, just very quick follow-up. So, yep. so if cortical areas have specific functions, which I think most people think they do, then the same kind of signal can have both like a local gain modulation type of effect and then something else like a wider effect. Is that kind of how you guys are thinking at the level of biology or is there something that I missed? Thanks. Yeah, so that is uh, slightly less clear to us. Um, so it could be the case that um, yeah, if we if we involve the um, uh, the local interneurons, uh, maybe they are, will be responding to like a, the global signal, and then um, but the their own activity will be uh, informed by what's happening in uh, their surrounding area. Um, but uh, sorry, can you rep repeat your question? Maybe? Thanks. Great, thank you so much.